Hello and welcome to another episode of Modular in a Week. This is also the first episode we're doing with uh, microcontrollers. Um, so, and I decided to jump straight into the uh, deep end and we're gonna start by doing a braids, mutable instrument braids. And you're thinking, oh no, surface components and all that stuff. This is actually a really simple build. This is all through, through whole components. Uh, there are no uh, surface mount components on this one. Not even the uh, microcontroller, which is just an STM32 board that you can buy on most uh, online uh, stores, Chinese stores as such. Um, so, really simple to build. Uh, if you've built any uh, kit, then you know it's the same procedure. Um, I would say the biggest hurdle is to find all the components needed as we are living in the Shipocalypse still. Uh, and also the STM32 on the back is quite difficult to find. Um, so. Uh, but we're going to go through all this, uh, let's just dive straight in and see where we can find all the stuff that we need to build this one. We need to start by making a really big shout out to Emily Gillet for uh, making all the Mutable Instruments modules open source. So technically if you are very good at doing SMD soldering then basically you could go to github.com pichinet urac that is emily's or mutable instruments uh, uh, github here you have all the modules uh, that mutable instruments have released and you can go into any one of them and you can find bootloader drivers dsp hardware design here you have the panel you have the pcb you have the Boom, the bill of material for elements, I'm guessing, not warps. And you have resource samples, test everything. You got everything in here to make these modules yourself. But you need to know how to do some SMD soldering. And some of these components are really tiny, so might be a bit of a challenge. But I know people who have done this. Amongst other, uh, we did a on my Discord we did the marbles so Bobby who was really awesome and did the whole ordering process He used a PCB manufacturing and PCB assembly service uh, They couldn't do all the components or so some of the components he had to do himself uh, I think there was only one of the, the uh, modules that got broken in that process. But it's a challenge and uh, it's not for anyone. I wouldn't do this. But if you want, you have all the modules from Mutable Instruments uh, on her GitHub. But some people on soundforce.nl uh, took these files and thought they would do a through-hole variant of braids. Uh, and what you see here is the through-hole variant. So using only through-hole components, which makes it way easier to make this module, uh, and then also using a STM32 module as that you can buy on AliExpress or eBay, all those places, made it way easier to make this. Some changes had to be done, so the uh, one of the hardware changes was in the original, it uses a 16-bit DAC, but there is only a 12-bit DAC 
uh, available in a through hole uh, version uh, so that's a difference uh, I can't say that I mean 12-bit is still way high fidelity compared to uh, say 8-bit with uh, which was very common in the 80s and, and still is in some modules will make some 8-bit modules and I, I, I can't say I hear the difference but I, I guess it's there but it's good enough for me with 12 bits of, of digital resolution. Uh, so this meant that he had to change some in the firmware in the DAC.h uh, to accommodate for the 12 bits instead of the 16 bits. Other than that there should be no troubles. Uh, here on sunforce.nl you have uh, if you want Eagle Files, if you want to change this PCB you can do that. You have the schematics for when you want to put the components in place. Uh, you have the Gerber files, uh, the control PCB and the brain PCB. You need both of these. Uh, and then there's a front panel here. I didn't get this one to work unfortunately. Uh, so uh, there is my modular journey. If we go to his GitHub, github.com slash my modular journey slash braids, then there's a Gerber braids panel there, and that's the one I'm using. Uh, because for some reason I didn't get this one to work. And then we have the firmware. We have firmware files with normal encoder rotation and inverted encoder rotation. And this depends on which uh, encoder you uh, get and use. And of course the bill of materials and assembly instructions. Um, on my Discord, again, there is a MITH Braids uh, channel. And on here there we talk a lot about everything. Uh, that has to do with this because we were a bunch who did this a while back. On the pin messages you have all the uh, resources, Soundforce NL, the manual for braids, uh, a couple of different firmwares and the application needed to program these. Uh, we'll go through that in a minute and my modular journeys front panel and Oh yeah, this one is really good. Uh, it's uh, going goes through all the. Let's see, I have that here. It's a document that goes through all the waveforms, uh, showing what they uh, what they are supposed to imitate and and uh, what they sound like and what the knobs do for the different waveforms. And there is a lot, as you can see. And then we go down here. There's a few of us who did ordering lists from. So here's from DigiKey, uh, some encoders. Yeah, here's the boom, and here's my basket from uh, Reichelt, where I bought some of the components that I couldn't find at the Chinese uh, component stores. So the boom. Uh, bill of materials looks like this. You just make sure you have everything or order some stuff. The difficult parts to find uh, may be these uh, 14 segment 2 character LED modules. Uh, I have a link I'll put in the description that I know works. The AliExpress link in the boom doesn't work anymore unfortunately. Uh, yeah, the encoders, 24 stops with clicks uh, and switch. I have a bunch of these. Uh, I'll, I, I'll make sure I have them in the store. Um, not sure if which, if they're inverted or the right way. Uh, we'll see that. And then you need the programmer for the STM32 board. Very easy to find. But then you need uh, the STM32 F103CB T6. Uh, and that's important because the, the C8 is only 
it's only uh, 64 kilobytes of memory and the CB T6 is 128 kilobytes of memory so it uh, really needs to be the CB T6 um, I've tried a few different ones other modules the newest module the STM 32 F 411 I believe it's called uh, I have not gotten that to work uh, yet unfortunately thing is these are really difficult to come by now not the C86 64 kilobytes no problem at all the 128 kilobytes is really difficult to find so if you have one of those in your uh, arsenal of components no problem but if you don't it might be uh, difficult for you to find these I'm if, if someone has a link to someone selling these please let me know so I can put the link in the description for that because uh, it's really hard to find these all right let's look at some of the more special hardware we need to uh, find uh, the bill of material is quite straightforward there are quite a bit of uh, not special parts but expensive parts like the MCP 3204 a quad 12-bit ADC and the MCP4822 12-bit DAC uh, and a lot of power regulators and stuff like that but in most big or large component distributors you will find uh, these parts no problem the bit special parts is on this table some difficult to find some not first of all the braids a set of PCBs you will need all three PCBs if you want to make it uh, as I show uh, the my modular journey front panel which is really nice with embossed uh, things that I think is from uh, mutable instruments homepage uh, and you got the uh, control board where all the controls are and the LED display and some other components and then you have the brains board where the you put the STM32 on the back and all the rest of the components um, so when it comes to the STM32 there are a lot of these out there uh, and what you really want is an STM32 F103CBT6 this is that one uh, there are other versions that look like the only thing that differ is the uh, what kind of USB port they have and that really you can have a CBT6 uh, with a micro USB and a and then you have here uh, the STM32 F103 C8 T6 um, which according to spec is only 64k memory so that's the difference this is 128k memory and the STM uh, the CB C8 T6 is only 64k so and I Bought, these are all bought on AliExpress there are a lot of different ones here's these are usually called blue pills because they're blue this is a black pill and before it was that the black pill was 128 K C B T 6 and the blue pill was 64 K the uh, C 8 T 6 but that's not the point anymore and just I wanted to try to um, what happened if you had a C8 T6 so a 64k version this is it uh, and I ordered this from uh, Aliexpress as well they're all from Aliexpress um, and this is like one quarter of the price so uh, if, if you only need 64k memory this is really nice but the thing is this one shows up in the programmer in the STM cube programmer as a 128k version so I've ordered a few more from the same developer or seller I mean and if 
they're all 128k and they seem to work um, I'll put the link in the description for that uh, these are all true STM32 uh, chips as far as I can see um, there is another one uh, let's see where's the other one this one sorry this one is not uh, STM it says STM32 mini this one is actually the chip on this one is actually an APM32 F103CBT6 so it's still a 128k version but manufacturer is called APM and I've tried this one and it also works but I can't find any for sale anymore so I don't know if it was just a one time thing that I found these uh, and tried them and they worked there is STM has a new model called uh, STM F1 F411 and F401 uh, the F11 is the 128k version and the F41 is the 64k version these do not work so I've tried these maybe they work I can't get them to work so I, a big um, disclaimer on this one that the STM 32F411 doesn't work it's even got a few of the pins are mixed up according to the other ones so uh, I even had to build a small board to change these up just to get the pins correct but it still didn't work so I'm saying this one probably doesn't work and then we have the LED display I, I haven't found these at any of the bigger distribution companies uh, I did find these two different kinds red one and green ones um, and these are LED displays and you need to be careful so you get the anode, common anode, common cathode in the correct order uh, and I'll write down here now what you should have uh, because that doesn't say very well uh, and I bought these two and I didn't think of that so I bought these are the green ones these are the red ones uh, and the green ones were of course wrong so I had to desolder these from uh, my second braids uh, but the red ones were okay and if these are still for sale I'll put the link to these in the description as well uh, other than that um, yeah you have to you have to look for these a bit to find the correct ones and find these are 14 segment LED displays these are seven segment LED displays and as you can see there's a bunch more segments on these ones uh, and then also of course you need the programmer and when I bought this 64k version I bought it with a programmer as well and instead of three dollars or two dollars it's three or four dollars so it's just one dollar extra uh, if you buy them as a kit so I would uh, suggest you do that and they're different colors they all work the same so that's the special hardware Back in the computer we now need to get the software to program the STM32. So on the Discord or in the description below there is the link to STM uh, software page um, and this is the STM link so you get the latest here we accept the agreement and then we need to fill in first name last name and email address you will get the link and you will install that link or download the, from that link actually you get that here after you do that you download it you install you press next 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 I don't need to tell you how to install a program you've all done this before once you've done that you will have a program called STM cube programmer we start that and it will look something like this 
So let's plug in our STM32. So again, to program it, we need the programmer, the STM32 of course, and a cable in between. You have four connections, 3.3 volts, uh, SWIO, SWCLK, and GND, so ground, 3 volts, and in-out port and clock port. Um, of course, you have the same ports on the STM Link 32, but you have a bunch more, so it's important to keep this in mind. So you have SWCLK, SWDIO, GND, and 3.3 volts on the bottom row from this point watching. So if you see the diagram here and you do like that, that corresponds to the pins. So we should use the rightmost pins on this on that side. And the topmost, watching this diagram again, uh, the four topmost pins. However, it's not completely straightforward because we have 3.3 volts there, ground down there, and here 3.3 volts and ground are together. So we can do that simply by on the STM32 we use a cable like this um, for DuPont cables and they're all just straight like that. But on the other side we take the ground cable that's this one, the gray one from over here and we switch that over so we take that down and close uh, and just beside 3.3 volts. So if we put that in like so, we have purple is SW clock, and we look over here, purple, we're watching this upside down, uh, there, purple is the second one, And ground was the gray one, we know that. Blue is SWIO, we can see that over there. And 3.3 volts is the green one. So with this, so it's just the ground cable you need to move over. And now it's done and we should be able to connect this to the computer. And when we connect it to the computer, it should start to blink. And stuff like that and we should have a signal that the computer found a USB device. It might take a few seconds or one minute or something to install the device drivers. Once that is done in our STM Cube programmer we make sure over here that we have chosen ST-Link. There's a, diff a few different ones. We take the ST-Link and we press connect and it should change to connected. Here we have target information, so here we see what kind of device it is. It's an STM32F101, 102 or 103. And this one, just to make sure uh, that... So I bought a few other ones, uh, so this is a 64 kilobyte version. Uh, let's disconnect this and let's connect some other device. Here is another, 60, another one that I bought as a 64K version, uh, but that actually, if we connect it, it actually says 128K. So that's what I mean, that sometimes you get lucky with these cheap uh, AliExpress sellers, uh, but not always. So I bought three, I bought five so far, I haven't gotten two of them, but of the three I bought, one is 128, the other ones are 64, so it's a hit and miss, I guess. So now we can download the files, if you haven't done that already, to put that on the STM32. And the ones I've had best luck with is these three here, so you need the Braids Renaissance through hole, uh, and the Braids Encoder Inverted, and the braids bootloader. So needs to download these. Um, you only need two of them, of course, because this depends on which way your encoder uh, that you install in your braids works. Uh, it's either this way or it's that way. 
and depending on where you buy your encoders the, the rotation is not uh, communicated or written anywhere so it's good that there's both you can just try it out so we got them now we go back into the programmer we open file we go to downloads here we have them so we start with the braids bootloader we open that up and we download let's see what it did uh, erasing memory corresponding to segment erasing internal memory sector series through seven there I think if you press this button over here you get only the download functions for the STM32 uh, so anyway we, we've added the bootloader let's add I don't know which one I have either so let's start with the renaissance through hole so we don't want to make a full chip erase but we want to uh, to erase the sectors that we are addressing so that's what we did so now let's um, if you haven't already do all this soldering of the to solder the STM32 together and let's plug this in to see if it works and here we have uh, braids lying around just ready for us to plug the STM in I can show you what it will look like so this is the front of course looks just like any braids um, the brain board here you have all the special components a few power regulators uh, and once you place that there there's only a place on the back side to put the STM32 on the footprint you have it says USB at the top that is of course the small USB port of the STM so you place it that way I've done as an extra precaution because one thing I've noticed in these let's see if these are different yeah so all these uh, there's one pin that can be either ground or 5 volts and that's the top most left uh, right pin so on this one it's ground and on this one it is 5 volts so if you look closely you can see that I've just removed that pin there's no pin there and there's no pin there just to make it I believe it's it's not connected to anything on this one but just to be extra sure I've removed the pin so there's no risk of a short between 5 volts and ground so we attach this like so and then we attach voltage and that is what should come up seesaw and the seesaw is the most left right left choice so that means uh, in my case uh, the encoder worked so good uh, maybe we should see if there's sound in it no place to put this down we just do like this And of course, it seems to work as it should. Yeah. I'm not going to give you a demonstration of a braids because that is tons of videos online for that. Before we end this I wanted to show this. I did uh, get one of the 64k versions so you can see down here this is a 64k it's the M32 F103 um, and if we put the if we start the programming here put on the braids 
bootloader sector 027 and then the braids renaissance through hole uh, which goes into segments 16 to 123 we don't download verified successful we don't get an error and it seems to add it as it should uh, I plug this into a braids and it works just as it should all the waveform seems to be there I don't know maybe there's something in the back that doesn't work uh, I don't know but so far it seems to work just like any uh, like any of the other modules so if you want to start with one of the cheaper STM32 modules maybe you buy a kit with the uh, programmer and the 64k version C8 T6 uh, and if that doesn't work then you could go and buy the more expensive one just a thought so this is all I'm going to show about how to make uh, a braids through hole. Uh, if you've watched my videos long enough and if, if you've followed any of them or done a, at least a few PCBs of your own, you should be able to figure this out. It's stri straightforward, just through hole components, very simple to make really. Um, so yeah. So I know you've Maybe not all, but some of you have waited a long time for uh, me to come back to doing videos and this just know that this video took about six months to make uh, because of so many different reasons, but mainly because once you stop making videos, it is very hard to start making them again, it seems like. Um, yeah, you all know I've had a lot of struggles uh, during the last year. Uh, so, but um, now <laughs> I'm uh, at least made one. So uh, with this, I hope that the uh, plug is uh, gone and I can start making videos more regularly again. Um, this means I want to make a huge shout out to my patrons who. Um, for some reason stayed uh, keep on supporting me through this almost stupidly long time so I, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed by your support and, and really truly thankful for you staying there um, even those of you who uh, left after a few months full Thank you to you as well. Uh, it's you're all amazing uh, for supporting me one month or or ten months or two years. You're all amazing. I just want to want you to know that. Thank you so much for supporting me. Um, with that said, the fi the files for this are completely free. As I said before, I'm not the one who did them either so uh, my modular journey for the panel and uh, and sound force NL for uh, the uh, through hole variant uh, big shout out to those for for making this possible so you can download these files for free if you don't feel like doing that I have a few in my shop that you can buy for a reasonable price um, and uh, yeah and there's more stuff coming there uh, f since I'm going to make a few other modules as well. Um, so the next module we will make is a through hole PWM version of the peaks. So hoping to have that in your for your viewing pleasure in a much shorter time than this video was. So with all that said. Uh, Thank you so much for watching, um, go build one of these, this is by far the best DIY, uh, like really cheap comparatively uh, module that you can build uh, and uh, yeah it's, a, it's an awesome module. What you hear is just one just making a 
noise with an LFO going up and down and the other one playing a melody with a wowl so yeah super module module to have with loads of waveforms but enough of this until the next time take care bye